Hey everybody. Hi, this is Danielle Daniel. I am a licensed clinical social worker and doctor of clinical psychology student and joining you here on this fabulous Tuesday. I'm here in San Diego, California. A little cold today, actually. It's sunny, but like windy and cold. Anytime it's below 70, I think it's cold. So I see there's a lot of you jumping on. And for those of you watching the recording, hello. Please introduce yourself as you jump on, whether it's recording or not, and say hi and where you're joining me from. I always like to see where everybody is from. It's fun to connect with you on the Product Talk Tuesdays. If you're new to seeing my Product Talk Tuesday, please comment and just say this is your first time. We'd love to get to know you a little better. I do these every Tuesday for just 20 minutes and we talk about different subjects. And I want to open up some time today for Q&A as well. And I'm going to start doing some interview styles. So hello. Hi, Michelle. Um, so I'm going to start doing some interviews so you can hear some from some other professionals on emotional wellness topics and what types of things you can do for intervention. So hello, Julia. Oh, you guys are so great. I'm excited that you're joining. So today I'm going to talk about uh, an awesome topic. I've decided to call it what is the difference between being moody or bipolar? <laughs> so I think there's a lot of misconception around this as us as therapists and doing the diagnosis in this. We have a lot of people that come in and they're like, oh, they're moody. So I think they're bipolar and there is a difference. So we're going to talk about that. Hello, Margaret from Long Beach. So I'm, I want to ask you guys a um, couple questions and then you can type them in and I'll probably go back and look at them. But one one question is, anytime you're feeling like your mood is just really down and low, what are two things that you do? Maybe one's an essential oil, maybe one is, you know, breathing or just, I would love to hear what you do to really help if your mood is just feeling really low and you need to uplift your mood or just kind of reground yourself. So please type those in. I will definitely go back and look at those afterwards. So as you're joining too, please share this. If you're on Facebook, you can share it onto your news feeds, your groups, and things like that as we really dive into emotional wellness and the brain health. That's my favorite thing to talk about. Uh, last week, I did a talk on, I think it was probiotics was last week, and I told um, you guys I would be looking for everybody who shares, and we'll put all the names and draw a name out, and I did that, and they're going to win a probiotic from me. So I've got a PB Assist with someone's name on it. So Linnea Blair, if you're watching the recording or the live, um, you are the winner. She's at Linnea, um, Linnea's Essential Garden is what it was. So anyway, I will be connecting with you to get this to you. So congrats, Linnea, for sh and thanks for sharing. So I'd love to be able to get topics out there. A couple of announcements before um, Diana says you keep losing the event. Yes, there's a... It seems okay on my end, but you never know with Facebook and, and Internet, and I'm using Internet a lot. So I've got Webinar Jam going and Facebook, so it might be interrupting. Sorry about that. So um, a couple announcements I want to talk to you guys about. I haven't said too much about it, but I've been working real heavily on the Holistic Emotional Wellness Summit. And it's a project that I've been working on. I did one locally in San Diego a couple of years ago and I've wanted to move it online. And we're doing that and launching it this next Monday for people to start registering. So the Holistic Emotional Wellness Summit, I've got about 30 presenters. It'll be all online. And we're going to be talking about all sorts of emotional wellness, um, emotions, and just uh, mental health topics that you are going to love. It's going to be incredible. The cost is only $39. And what's really cool is, again, this is I'm doing this because I want to spread emotional um, awareness all over. And also, I want to connect with all these other amazing um, experts in their fields and allow them a, a, a platform to share their expertise. So the proceeds are only going, um, they're going to, the profit's going to fund um, sex trafficking, against sex trafficking, not fund sex trafficking, but fund against sex trafficking. So with this nonprofit, we're not doing this for, you know, making any income. Everything that is profit is going to donate to our rescue, which fights for awareness and intervention services and the fight against sex trafficking of children. So look for that, the Holistic Emotional Wellness Summit you'll want to attend. And also it'll be your you know ticket will be go towards donations. So that's a good humanitarian little um, thing you can feel good about and a write-off for you too. So that's really good. Um, the next 
thing I was going to tell you. Oh, I just wanted to ask if there's anybody on here watching the recording or maybe um, that's um, listening to live or whatever, somebody who's had experience with personal experience, maybe working with a, you know, a child or a husband that's a returning soldier. If you could message me, I'm really collecting some information to help for returning soldiers and want to see what people are doing and what's really working. So, all right, let's dive in. And as I start this topic, anybody who wants to be a commenter, either on Webinar Jam and on Facebook would be great. So we can have the comments going, which help our brain remember it even more as I'm speaking it and hearing it. So, and at the very end, I'm gonna I'm gonna do, you know, little 10 minutes, or I'm sorry, five minutes at the very end, just of Q&A, so some questions. So have your have your questions ready to go. So a couple of things when we look at when someone says, OK, they're moody, um, I think they might be bipolar. So let me talk about bipolar for a minute. There's three different types of bipolar and there's three different levels. So one's called cyclothymia, which is the lesser form. And another one's called bipolar one and another one bipolar two. So they're kind of a tiered level as well, just to break this down very simply for you. So bipolar 2, I'm going to start at the top tier. Bipolar 2 is when you have someone who has mania, and mania is where it's about maybe two weeks of just elevated mood, elevated thoughts, like racing thoughts, um, grandiose thoughts, sometimes psychosis, sometimes hospitalization. So bipolar 2 can be you know, quite extreme on the mania, and it lasts a long time. Then the other feature of bipolar 2 is generally it comes along with a depressed feature, but it doesn't have to. Just so you know, it doesn't have to, but generally when someone's this elevated, they do go to a, a depressed mood. So that's bipolar 2. With bipolar 1, that is um, a lesser form of the mania. So really bipolar is defined by the mania. So hypomania is what's in bipolar um, one. And so it's not defined by depressed or moody. Really someone who's moody is generally just struggling with depressed mood. So bipolar one is that hypomania, which it's like generally three to five days of elevated mood racing thoughts. When I say this, this means they can hardly sleep. Sometimes they'll, you know, have where this whole campaign where they're going to run for president and they know exactly what they're going to say and they write all these speeches. It's just like their mind cannot shut off where they can hardly even sleep. So that's three to five days on the bipolar um, one. And then cyclothymia is a little bit, um, and so sorry, go back to bipolar one. There's also can be the depressed feature, but it's not a requirement for being di diagnosed with bipolar one. Again, the requirement is really that mania. So that's a key feature to bipolar. And then cyclothymia, the key feature as well, is, um, is, hypomania, is hypomania, but it's not, it's, it comes and goes, where it's just like excited and just they feel like they can do anything, accomplish the world. Maybe they want to get, you know, name a country after themselves, like just real um, grandiose compared to the thinking that they're in the other days where then cyclothymia does go into depressed mood. So I hope that helps understand the three different levels of bipolar and what the difference is between moody. So moody is really when someone is usually depressed, they're ornery, they're angry, and sometimes they'll be in a normal mood, but then they get to just being irritable. That's actually depression. Um, so only the feature of bipolar is that mania, super elevated racing thoughts. Sometimes they write lyrics, like three days of like music lyrics and things like that. So um, if you have any questions on that, definitely let me know. But then let's go into really what depressed mood looks like. And that can be a feature of bipolar as long as the mania or hypomania is present. So Things that affect depressed mood or just low mood, I'm going to call it, because I'm going to talk about um, some natural remedies that you can do that are, again, not for diagnoses, but they're definitely to help if you're just feeling kind of low. But stress. So corticosteroids from our adrenals, those stress hormones, actually can onset depressed mood. So being careful of you know, how much we're running around and feeling frantic and stress and just um, changing our lives. You know, one thing I do is 
I've really worked on cutting out the word busy when people are saying, oh, what have you been up to? And, and instead of saying busy, you know, because how does the word busy feel? What does that, how, how does it come off? What's that sense you get when someone says they're busy? It's kind of negative and it's kind of like, oh, like overwhelm. It's not a positive emotion for sure. So when I, because we're all busy, right? So when people, what I say when people ask me, what have you been up to? Instead of going, oh, I've been so busy. I just say, oh, I was working on this event and I'm working on my doctorate. Things are good. Do you see the difference in just being positive about what you're doing rather than just being uh, busy kind of? So that's another way, again, just working in your mind what you can do um, for lowering stress, those stress hormones, those corticosteroids that absolutely um, onset a low mood. So other neurotransmitters that are affected with, that affect mood, that cause like a low mood is going to be your monoamine neurotransmitters, which are your dopamine, primarily dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine. So those are the three that they find kind of faulty with um, a depressed mood or depressed emotions. Maybe I'll say that. So depressed emotions, because when those are low, um, it's just, you know, causing you to feel just hope, like not, you know, hopeless and just not excited about life and loss of interest in things. So there's a couple natural things you can do to uplift those. And one of them is exercise. When you I mean, I know that sounds like total elementary, right? <laughs> but it does. When you exercise, it increases endorphins, which are absolutely tied to like norepinephrine and epinephrine are from, you know, created from endorphin, endorphins. So exercise is a great way just to combat that. And then positive thoughts. Usually they say that a healthy level is if you can have three to one positive thoughts to a negative thought. So anytime you're, you know, this is CBT and your CBT, sorry, cognitive behavioral therapy is when you have a negative thought, come on, you just combat it with three positives. And sometimes even what I do, because as a normal human, I, you know, have where I start feeling just really low and down. I put stickies of all the positive thoughts and I have them around my mirrors and I just have them around me so that that energy is creating, again, those neural patterns in the mind, which help with dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine, and just feeling good. So um, one of the worst things you can do for a depressed mood is alcohol, which is actually one of those, it's a depressant, but a lot of people who are depressed um, drink alcohol, uh, but it's actually really bad for the brain. Um, so I would highly suggest, you know, limiting if not even not having any alcohol at all in your in your body there's no reason for it I know a lot of people think okay just a glass of wine's okay but I just studying what alcohol does to your brain I just think it's better to you know abstain from that so that's one thing that can influence the mood so again stress um, those neurotransmitters that we just talked about and then alcohol are three major things that are compromised with the lower depressed emotions so let's talk about a couple of other things um, for as far as essential oils that I like to use to boost mood, limonene and one study is, well, not one study, actually tons of studies have been done on limonene content. Who knows what is limonene content? What essential oils are limonene content found in? Citruses, right? So citrus bliss has like every single citrus you could imagine, it's got orange, lemon, grapefruit, mandarin, bergamot, tangerine, clementine. This is actually what I've got diffusing um, pretty much all the time in my house. I love the smell of citruses. So this is going to be really good. I just diffuse it. This is what I diffused in my office with um, I, every single day just because clients love the smell of it and it works. It's good for anxious emotions, depressed emotions and things like that. So this is one of my favorites. But the study that I'm going to cite right here found that limonene metabolites taken internally may have a strong effect on the release of monoamine neurotransmitters, which is your norepinephrine, um, your serotonin, and your dopamine. So the next study, and then I'll go into a little formula here, it was rosemary they found when ingested may have an effect on serotonin levels in the brain. So two really good oils. What I like to do with these two, rosemary and lemon, 
Now, again, just to understand, this is not like a treatment for a mental health diagnosis. I want you to understand the difference between mental health diagnosis and just having a low mood so that you can do these as a regular basis for, you know, a healthy individual. And rosemary, we know, is already a healthy herb. And lemons, we know, are super healthy for our gut, too. So I do what I have people do is do one drop of rosemary and three drops of lemon in a capsule, in a veggie capsule, and just um, take this internally. This is a great once a day, just maintenance of your mood. So mood maintenance, okay? So three three drops lemon, one drop rosemary. If someone wants to type that in so people can see that. This is a great one for mood balancing and mood uplifting. And then the last uh, little blend I have for you on here of essential oils is called the Mind's End Blend. I called it that. That's my you know branded blend. I love this blend. It smells so good. But it also was found in research that it may have an effect on calming um, overexcited thoughts, okay? So this is a feature, like I was saying, when someone is in that mode of just having elevated thoughts and um, uh, maybe can't calm their emotions and thoughts down, Mind Zen Blend is a good way to do that. So that's Wild Orange, Clary Sage, Lavender, and Sandalwood. So these four... And I do either in a um, diffuser, two drops of each, or I do um, in a roller bottle, probably in a 10 milliliter, I would do five drops of each and then fill the rest with the carrier oil. So again, I'll say these again so someone can type it in. Thank you. I think someone just typed it in for me. Thanks so much. So I've got wild orange. Clary Sage, which wild orange is some um, sweet orange, and that's what the this research study that I found that helped with, you know, calming those overexcited thoughts. So that's wild orange, Clary Sage, lavender, and sandalwood. And already sandalwood's like my favorite oil, so it's a it's a good blend right off the bat. But you can do five drops of each in a 10 milliliter roller bottle with fractionated coconut oil, or two drops each in a diffuser. I have some therapists that have used this with uh, clients who have um, OCD and bipolar and have reported and just said it really helped their them their thoughts to focus in on the session on the you know therapy session and get a lot um, a lot more work done through you know talking instead of just having their thoughts and emotions all over the place. So really good one for a therapy office is this Mind Zen Blend. So lastly that I found in some research was phytoestrogens. This one kind of surprised me. I didn't even think about this one. But phytoestrogens are plants that have um, estrogen-like capabilities so that they can bond or bind to estrogen receptors in the body. If we're low in estrogen or too high in estrogen, then they'll actually um, uh, get rid of like um, xenoestrogens. So this is a whole other topic, but xenoestrogens are false estrogens that our body creates from either, you know, shampoos and things that we use or any toxic chemicals that are around us or things that we eat that mock estrogen and make our body um, deplete itself of producing its own estrogen. So phytoestrogens, just all you have to remember is they're great at balancing estrogen and kicking off xenoestrogens, which are bad estrogens, from your estrogen receptor sites. So hopefully all of that made sense. But this is a great complex. Again, um, just pomegranate and flaxseed is in here. Um, soy extract from isoflavins and things that all are phytoestrogen type plants. Other phytoestrogens that balance mood. Again, this is a good one for balancing mood. Ginseng, garlic, clary sage itself, lavender is as well, and primrose. So phytoestrogens. This is for you know men and women. This isn't just you know because it's estrogen. It helps to balance estrogen in the body. So last couple things that they you know from research suggesting are affirmations and then um, recording positive affirmations to music really helps your brain remember it. That's why, you know, I'm going to tell a story. When I was a little girl, my dad, we, um, my parents were divorced. So my dad would pick us up and we would go in his car. And I remember I was probably five. And I remember just thinking my dad was the smartest thing in the world because all the songs on the radio would come on and he would just sing them and he would put our names 
in the in the song instead of you know whatever the song was saying and it was hilarious but i remember just thinking the song said all these different songs on the radio said my name in it and i remember thinking my dad is so smart because he knows he would know like every single song that came on the radio in the 80s you know and so um the thing is is our mind remembers songs very well so this is um, a really good thing to put affirmations to is to music and songs. And it's it's a little corny, but it's worth it. And you just record a voice memo with a song and that will really help. So that's another good one. And then yoga and meditation are the other um, top like um, treatments or remedies that are natural, alternative or complementary, I should say, methods for balancing and managing mood. So anyway, would love to see. I know it looks like uh, the Facebook you guys said it wasn't it was cutting in and out. So hopefully with the recording, it recorded perfectly. And um, would love to see any questions you have. If I don't get to them right now, I'll definitely go back. I always um, make sure I answer comments. And then also I'd love to hear what you guys do for mood balancing, uh, how you help with um, what you've used essential oil wise, but also just in general, what's helped you. So thanks so much, everybody. It's been 20 minutes. Great to be on with you. I can stay on for Q&A, but I'm thinking that because of Facebook, it's not um, it's kicking everybody off. So I will probably go and we'll do another Q&A another time, but we'll see you next week for the Product Talk Tuesday. Have a good Tuesday. Bye.